Hello. I'm so glad you're here. Carlos Mariani Rosa, Executive Director of the Minnesota Education Equity Partnership. It's really an important point right now uh, to, be, to be together and to have this conversation and to have this sharing uh, with one another. You know, quite frankly, it, it's always been the right time, but uh, right now is right now. And here's what we know. Uh, we know that in Minnesota, we built up these systems of opportunity um, based on accessing higher education, post-secondary education, uh, which is really, you know, pursuit of, of knowledge that uh, goes beyond uh, rudimentary, fundamentary, you know, uh, preparation to be a thinking um, uh, person uh, that one can translate into a vocation, into a pursuit of those things that are most important to you. I just can't think of a more sacred um, uh, work that we can be doing together in terms of providing that kind of access, that kind of opportunity uh, for everyone, and particularly uh, for our young people. But here's the thing, we don't actually provide that uh, for everyone, not in the real way. Yeah, you know, we've got it structured. Um, you know, there's, there's a system, uh, there's coursework, uh, there's curriculum, uh, there are uh, people uh, within that system that can hook you up and connect you. But quite frankly, statistics don't lie. And our statistics in our state is that when it comes to black, brown, indigenous, uh, Asian brothers and sisters, uh, that opportunity is still pretty rare. Uh, yeah, you know, people are moving uh, in increasing numbers out of our K-12 system into that post-secondary system. But it's not just about moving, it's about real access. And so today, what I want us to do is to engage in a deeper dive um, in terms of what access means. Let me tell you what it meant for me uh, years ago. So just to let you know, this isn't necessarily rocket science. Uh, it isn't necessarily having to invent everything anew, but there's also a newness to it. And the newness really has to do with being committed to being open enough to redesign how we do our work so that black, brown, indigenous, Asian communities can be truly in that space, honoring themselves. You know, for me, uh, decades ago, I was recruited uh, to a private school here in this state. Um, I'm a product of a Chicago public education, which some people might argue is not much of an education. Um, we lived in some pretty rough uh, communities with a lot of violence, a lot of distractions, very minimal guidance. Uh, and yet, through a number of, of, of incredible uh, circumstances, I was able uh, to attend a private school here um, in, in Minnesota. Could have been a public school. The point is that I did something beyond high school, uh, which was unheard of in my family, unheard of in my community. And here's what that institution did. It surrounded me. I mean, surrounded me with incredible support, with the very technical financial uh, means for, uh, for me to get through uh, that experience. It uh, understood and was patient with me and never gave up so that when I walked away two years into that education uh, to go and find myself, uh, because I, I was mature enough to, to know at that point that things just weren't working out for me. Um, there were family issues I needed to take care of. Uh, it didn't give up on me then. When I came back, it continued to surround me, to support me, and it did it, not just in a one-on-one -on -one relationship, it did it by creating a community, a, a collective force and effort so that there were multiple points of accountability um, surrounded by support, uh, uh, buoyed by making it financially possible uh, for me to be there. I mean, that's really it in my mind in a nutshell. The question is for us, how do we do, how do we pursue that kind of wisdom in terms of designing big systems? I don't have the answers to all that, but I know what works because it worked for me and I've seen it work for some, so many others. And for us to let that happen just at a campus, you know, an occasional campus during an occasional period of time, 
That's just so beneath us. It's also, frankly, not what's going to get things done uh, for our state. So here's the pragmatic side of this argument, right? Which is uh, changing demographics, shifting uh, super fast, uh, really challenging us in terms of figuring out where our labor capital is going to be coming from, like not way down in the you know, distant future, but like tomorrow. Uh, and uh, it's pretty clear that it needs to come from increasingly uh, other, from other communities, from diverse uh, communities, uh, not just our white male uh, communities, which has been the bedrock, quite frankly, of a lot of our economy. Totally not all of it, absolutely not. All communities have been contributing. But I'm talking about advanced knowledge and applying those skills in order to build this complicated uh, society. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna need uh, black physicians. We're gonna need um, uh, American Indian engineers. Um, we're gonna need um, uh, folks that uh, pursue new technologies from different communities, whether they, you know, those individuals live on reservations right now or on the west side of St. Paul or north side of Minneapolis. We need them. And the pragmatic argument then for us uh, being about system redesign is about making sure that that design is accessible uh, to all of these communities. Uh, that's a practical thing. But, uh, but let me just add that without the spirit behind it, uh, the practical stuff is only going to get you, only going to get us so far. Here's what I believe. I believe that education, and especially uh, when we get into the post-secondary phase of our life, is part of an important journey of liberation. Knowledge uh, makes it possible for us to empower ourselves. And empowerment, self-empowerment, is part of that liberation dynamic. And uh, what we have right now uh, are opportunities uh, but as I said, they're pretty limited and they're not centered necessarily on understanding that what we're talking about here, what, what I'm encouraging, is that uh, we wrap our design uh, around everything that makes it possible for communities to be part of their self-liberation. Folks show up on campus, uh, they don't leave the racism uh, behind, they don't leave the fact that they got hurt. Uh, by, you know, perhaps a white cop, you know, or uh, a non-understanding uh, teacher uh, in the past, uh, that their parents' uh, abilities to be able to uh, provide have been limited, uh, perhaps from collateral consequences flowing from, um, you know, engagements with the criminal justice system that maybe happened 20, 30 years ago, but they're still paying the price. These are real things. There's trauma uh, that exists in many of our communities from that. Uh, and there's trauma that exists for many of our communities in terms of the experiences, uh, their lived experiences from other spaces and other places uh, on this planet. And so if our post-secondary systems aren't hip to that, aren't centered uh, on that reality, then we're gonna continue to deliver the design that we've always had. The design that quite frankly, you know, is based on assumptions uh, that uh, are based on primarily white student lived experiences, specifically uh, privileged um, uh, white students. Um, if you really want to break it down even more, male uh, white privileged students. So money is a part of your reality. Uh, you got money? Hey, we got a system that's designed uh, for you to access uh, uh, based on your money. Um, it really is as simple as that. Students get this. They know this, they know when a system, they know when an environment is attuned to who they are, um, what their experiences uh, are, uh, and they know whether that system is going to support them. Because for many of our communities, uh, we can't be playing around, man. You know, uh, it really is about being engaged in real stuff that's gonna support my family, my community, my experience. Uh, we can do that uh, in Pulse Secondary. There are examples of that here and there uh, spread uh, throughout our state. Our challenge today is to share that with one another and in the sharing of it, uh, design, begin designing uh, what that big, uh, begin architecting, 
you know, what that big design uh, can be for a systems level uh, shift so that we don't leave it just a chance that, you know, a young, uh, you know, uh, a black uh, male student from uh, South Minneapolis just happened to pick the right campus, happened to interact with the right folks who got it. Uh, yeah, that's going to happen, but that's not a systemic response. Uh, we need something that really guarantees uh, maximum um, opportunities uh, for uh, all people. Uh, regardless of where in the system uh, they're plugging in. So as I said, you know, my own life, um, you know, was transformed um, uh, because I was fortunate enough to uh, become part of something like that. Uh, we're talking back in the 70s, okay? And you know what it means? Uh, what it means is that my parents, uh, who both grew up uh, in the hills of Puerto Rico, uh, dirt poor, and I'm talking dirt poor, poor, like dirt floors, no running water, uh, you know, you went to the river to bathe, uh, you went to the river to wash your clothes, uh, you went to the river to get water, um, you know, they grew up uh, 40s and the 50s in an impoverished island uh, and were forced as a result to immigrate to the mainland, uh, to the United States, even though Puerto Rico is a part of the United States, uh, to seek opportunities. Uh, they did okay, uh, for sure. Uh, they were stymied in terms of how far they can go, but their son uh, was able to, through, through an educational supportive uh, environment, hip and attuned uh, to my realities, was able to get to a place where now I serve in the Minnesota House of Representatives. Their son uh, was able to do that. Um, and these things aren't accidents, you know, they really aren't. Uh, we shouldn't design our society around accidents. We should be very intentional about how we provide opportunities for one another. That's what happened for me in that one spot. What I'm asking all of us today is to stretch and push and pull ourselves to find a design that makes that possible for everyone. Uh, and to do that in such a way where it isn't just a special program, it is what post-secondary really is all about. So um, I wish you luck today because I need your luck. Uh, uh, I want you to bring uh, everything that you have, uh, your most creative soul. I want you to free yourselves uh, from conventional ways of thinking about how you do what you do. Uh, I'm not dismissing uh, any of that, that's important. You know? But I really want you to go to another place where uh, you're gonna be about uh, what all of these communities are going to be about. And if you don't know what that is, you know, please be honest and say that. Let's open up the space so that we can share with one another vital data about each other so that we can in fact be the good architects of a better system of higher education in the state of Minnesota. So thank you. God bless you and your work today.